What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today have we got a video for you. Today we're gonna be going over the 10 best guns under $300. Do you feel lucky, punk? If you're watching this video, you probably have a low budget, or you're just looking to get some cheap guns that work well, you're in the right place. Today we've gathered a huge selection of firearms, anything from shotguns to rifles to handguns to single shots, to try to give you the best selection of firearms for you. So if you're in the market for a good firearm that's pretty cheap, again, we've got you covered. Now we've tested these firearms, we've shot these firearms, and this is our opinion and our opinion alone. It is an educated opinion. All guns are individuals, and just because they're great for me doesn't mean they're great for you, and I wouldn't tell you anything is good unless it worked well for me. This is not an AI video where I just take stock footage of other people. We've shot all these guns, and we have lots of experience. I shoot thousands of rounds per year to try to give you the best advice I possibly can. Now before we get into this video, I do want to mention my Patreon supporters. A good portion of these guns were bought by you guys and we really appreciate your support. If you like our honest, independent reviews, please go down to Patreon and sign up. Also in the description of this video with the Patreon link is a link to a local shelter named Iowa. It's the YSS. Those kids could really use your help, so please go down there and donate to them as well. That being said, let's get into it with number 10 and we're gonna be talking about the Taurus G3C. Now the Taurus G series is a gun that I have reviewed a lot. I've actually reviewed the G2C, the G3, the G3C, and I think maybe another variant that I can't remember. I think I actually have three G3Cs and I have two G3s and I have two G2Cs. And out of all those, one didn't work out of the box, but all the rest of them have been excellent. So that's why it's at number 10 because they're usually pretty good for the money, coming in at about 200 bucks, but they can be a crapshoot like anything super cheap. You're rolling the dice, it is what it is. Now this comes with three magazines, 12 rounds a piece, it's 22 ounces, and it has a three inch barrel. It has a pretty interesting design where it has double strike capability as opposed to your standard striker fired guns, you can see here. We actually don't have to rack the slide, which increases the already good value that you get from the gun because you can dry fire practice really, really easy and you don't have to shoot quite as much ammo. Now you have to vet dry fire practice with ammo, but dry fire practice is the best, most affordable way that you can get good. And a lot of people these days are using the Manus Trainer. I would suggest that. However, if you can't afford that and you just want to fire to light switch, do that, get the ammo out of it, make sure it's a safe direction, all that, and then dry fire to your heart's delight. I do it all the time and that's why I can shoot the way I can. I'm not the best in the world, but I'm not bad. Out of all the guns out of the box that worked, all of them worked well. Uh, one or two malfunctions here and there, but extremely reliable, again, for the $200 price point. On top of that, these do take Glock sights, so if you wanna change the sights, that's pretty cool. They have front and rear slide serrations. They do come with a rail, so if you wanna put a light on that, you can. It actually has a pretty decent trigger and some pretty good texturing as well. All in all, if you get one that works, it's a pretty great gun, and for 200 bucks, you can buy three for the price of one Glock, which is kind of impressive. Into number nine is a better pistol, in my opinion, with a worse caliber. This is the Ruger Security 380. Now, this is the lowest I would go for self-defense, but 380 is definitely still good enough. 10 shots in the head is 10 shots in the head, so if you aim well, you're gonna be fine. Now, this has a 3.4 inch barrel. It only weighs 19 ounces, and it comes with two 10 round magazines of 380. So you get a double stack capability with a very easy to shoot pistol for really cheap. These come in for about 280 bucks. And coming from a company like Ruger that in my opinion is a step up from Taurus in quality and manufacturing, that's really good. We have a pretty decent trigger. We have some holes on the slide there to lighten the slide so you get less reciprocating mass. You have pretty good serrations on the back and you have a really good sighting setup for a cheap pistol with a fiber optic front and a blacked out rear. If you're buying a gun for your granny or you have somebody that's really recoil sensitive or can't operate a slide well, that's sort of what this gun's made for. I would definitely recommend that over something like the Cheetah series and stuff like that. Uh, really easy to control, really easy to shoot, very, very fast follow-up shots, and would definitely work in a self-defense situation. Overall, one of the best subcompact 380s on the market, and considering you can get it for less than 300, very good. I believe they have uh, safeties or not safety models. I actually had the one with the safety, and uh, I didn't really use it, to be honest with you. I just used it as a ledge for recoil control, and it worked for me. In at number eight is a gun I sadly don't have right now, but it is the Savage Axis. It is one of the cheapest bolt action rifles that you can get on the market. I had mine in 5.56, but you can get it in whatever caliber you want. I would probably recommend 308 for a do-it-all gun. You can honestly use that for self-defense and you can use it for hunting relatively well. A bolt action rifle is an ideal for CQB, but they did it in Normandy and you can do it right now. 308 can pop a guy down with one shot 
shot and that's kind of nice. The barrel length on mine was 22 inches, but you can get them bigger or shorter than that depending on what she likes. And the weight is really, really light at six pounds. So it's easy to carry all day if you're storming the beaches of Normandy or if you are hunting an elk, whatever the case may be, if you're gonna carry it a lot, lighter is always better. Four round magazine capacity with one of the tube is pretty good. Comes with a carbon steel barrel. They come with detachable magazines and it is a button rifled barrel, which is pretty good for the price of a sub $300 gun. Mine actually came with a scope as well. It's just a cheap Bushnell scope, but it certainly does the job. I know that cheap scopes are not nearly as good as a Leopold or a Night Force, but they're a hell of a lot better than just your eyeball. So it's nice that it came with it and it was already installed. And usually when people are buying their first gun, they're not really sure how to set a scope anyway, level a scope, adjust it, all that stuff. It's actually a little more difficult than you think it is. So it is kind of nice that they have models that come with or without. But if you're a little bit more of an advanced shooter and you want your own scope and you're gonna go with something a little higher end, I would recommend a primary arm scope we've had really good luck with those for the money you can pop one of those on there and you could shoot out to seven eight nine hundred yards i'm sure with a 308 bolt action just fine if you know what you're doing Ours was about a one and a half MOA gun, which is incredibly impressive for the price of $300. So you put $300 into the gun, you put a couple hundred bucks into the scope, put a couple hundred bucks into ammo, and there you go, you're quickly down under in no time. In at number seven is whoo, the High Point Carbine. We've also done a thousand round review on this gun and I know that it is very, very controversial because it looks like Ricky from Trailer Park Boys designed this. <laughs> <laughs> but it does work fairly well as long as you use the appropriate 10 round magazines. If you use the extended magazines, you're not gonna have any luck because those things are made out of fucking melted beer cans and sheet metal and they fall apart all the time. That being said, the carbine in and of itself, in my opinion, is much better than the handgun. It is a blowback operated design with a 16 inch barrel. It only weighs six and a half pounds and it comes with one 10 round magazine, but it does come with a pick rail for lights and lasers if you wanna put an optic on there. As long as you don't want it to be zeroed you're good to go because they are plastic rails and if you put a laser on there that'll be even more hilarious because I can move the plastic rail with my hand that being said we're talking about sub $300 guns the best under 300 and sadly this is it a semi-automatic rifle is pretty tough to get under $300 so this is really what you're looking at that in the ATI Omni that will probably blow up and blow your face off so this is second place <laughs> that being said we shot a thousand rounds for this we only had a couple malfunctions and if you had a burglar come to your house at night and you shot shoulder this bad boy you're probably getting 10 shots in a row and he's not gonna like that so it still will do the job and it's better than a sharp stick we have a one half by 28 thread on the front if you want to throw a suppressor that's probably worth triple your gun you could do that as well and it even has a lifetime warranty and it's made in America which is pretty crazy over there in Ohio I've actually shot with the high point guys and they're pretty cool but they are, in my opinion, hamstrung by the price point they're trying to put this gun out. So even though it's decent for $300, if you have the money, I would go a little bit higher. Maybe look at a Smith & Wesson FPC or something like that. But still a good gun for $300, Now, of all these on the table, I wouldn't pick this last. In at number six, my bias is about to show, so get ready for this. This is my fun pick. This is my Rossi Brawler. Now this is a single shot pistol that shoots 410 shotgun shells. And I was out at my buddy Nick's the other day shooting with Twister the Rapper, which was one of the coolest things you can do. <laughs> That's not a bad time. And this thing is so cool. So this single action, you have to pull the hammer back and you get one round as a safety. It has a rubber grip. You can fire 410 slugs or buckshot out of this, which is super cool. And you can also shoot 45 long colt, which I would recommend if you're gonna use it for self-defense. 45 long colt is more powerful in my opinion and better on target than a 410. Even though it's a shotgun slug, it's a very weak slug, which also gives it pretty low recoil and makes it really fun to shoot. It's super accurate. We were shooting at uh, distances of up to 50 yards with it and having no problem whatsoever. It has a rear sight built into the Picatinny rail, a uh, front sight post, and then it has a rail that you can put like an EOTAC or something on. And eventually when we do the first shots of this gun, I've only shot it at Nick's, but I wanted to throw it on this list because it's fucking awesome and new. They're like $200. Uh, but when we shoot this on the first shots video, I'm probably gonna put like an EOTAC and a Surefire Scout on it because why not? Now, I know what you're saying. One shot is not good for self-defense, but it is better than no shots. And if you hit your target, it's still gonna do one hell of a job. And I feel like for the price that this is, if you're out there to have just a fun gun, like you're pretending you're a pirate board in a ship or something, it kind of reminds me of a blunderbuss. I call it the pirate gun. 
uh, or if you just want to take care of some rats, snakes, stuff like that, or let's say you did have a burglar, this certainly would do the job if you hit your target. So I definitely would recommend the Rossi Brawler. However, know what you're getting into before you buy it. It's not a damn AR. In at number five, we have the Palmetto State Armory Dagger. The $300 Glock clone strikes again. What a gun for the price. We actually looked online and right now they're going for 250 bucks, which is pretty freaking impressive. Palmetto does a good job of making cheap guns straight to the consumer that actually work fairly well. In this case, I think this is their crown jewel. For $250, you can get as close to a Glock as you can get for $250. It has pretty good ergonomics. It was reliable through our thousand round test. We do have a full thousand round test of that of that gun if you wanna go see it, it's in our back catalog. It has a 22 ounce overall weight, a 3.9 inch barrel, and it comes with one 15 round magazine. Comes with basic sights and basic ergonomics for the $250 price point, but if you wanna pay a little bit more, you can get extras as you go. It's a reliable semi-automatic nine millimeter pistol that you can use for just about anything. You can carry it, you can use it for home defense, and because of that, reason it's certainly one of the best guns on this list and I really do like the dagger for whatever cost if it was $500 I would still recommend it so if you're looking for a solid semi-automatic pistol it's hard to ignore. In at number four we have the Canik TP9 SF. Now the Canik has been doing the damn thing for a while. I remember seeing these like 10, 12 years ago on a nothing fancy video. It was like the first time I'd ever seen one. And they're a striker fired pistol, polymer framed with usually a three to five inch barrel. They make a whole bunch of different variants of the TP9. They're all usually pre-cocked striker fired guns modeled after the P99. Now initially they had some problems with some heavy recoil springs because they use 124 grain NATO ammo. Whereas in America we generally use 115 grain relatively cheap ammo and sometimes they won't run in that. That being said, they seem to have fixed that lately because I've had about six Canics in the last five years, seven Canics. I've had at least one a year and all of them have been excellent through the thousand round review. I really can't recommend the Canic TP9 enough, especially for the price point. Coming in at somewhere between $250 and $500 depending on what kind of features you get, the gun's really impressive. The one I saw that was the cheapest was the four and a half inch barrel, 28 ounce gun. Comes with all the basic features that you could imagine. Imagine. however they're pretty slick now this one is the upgraded version this is about the $400 version that's the cheapest one I own and this is the TP9 Elite but as you can see here it's still an excellent gun you got rail you got a precock striker trigger you have a pretty good grip with some back straps you have a serrated magazine release they usually come with two or three magazines and they come with some pretty decent sights for the money as well now you got to pay a little extra to get the two-tone but the standard black one works just as well against intruders trust me they're not gonna be checking out what color your gun is anyway if you're looking to get a very accurate pistol that you can shoot at distances of 50 to 100 yards but you don't want to pay a lot the TP9 is certainly the way to go. Trigger control is one of the hardest for new shooters to learn, and you could make that a little easier on yourself by a lighter trigger. All right, now we're getting into some gangster ass guns. We're gonna be talking about the Mossberg 88. Now, of all the guns I would recommend for home defense, like if you have your house and you're trying to defend your children or your apartment or whatever it may be, and you wanna do it for under $300, it is tough to beat the Mossberg 88. I had one of these when I was in college. This was literally my home this not this one right here this cool FDE version but you can even get this one for under three hundred dollars but I had a pistol grip uh, folding stock version I got at a pawn shop for a hundred dollars and that was my apartment defense gun I've had a bit of a love affair with this gun ever since I was like 19 or 20 years old and that's because these things are basically the most budget version of the Mossberg 500 you can get but they still work extremely well this one here comes with a 20 inch barrel you can get them in any capacity really I mean this one has about an eight shot capacity Imagine having eight plus one of buckshot at the ready for under $300. You can take care of just about anything except for maybe a polar bear on meth. Watch out for those guys. A shotgun is probably the best way to go for home defense on a budget, just simply because you do have limited capacity, but you have extreme amounts of lethality. When it comes to a handgun like this, basically you're just poking holes. That's kind of a simple way to put it. The, every round that you put into the intended target is just gonna create a singular hole, whereas a shotgun is going to hit with the power of about seven to nine 45 slugs at once. So when buckshot hits you, it's usually eight or nine pellets, and they're each the equivalent of their own handgun round. And on top of that, they usually 
actually create a temporal cavity, which has a shock wave that goes through your internal organs, which people don't like. So that is a good thing because what you want to do is you want to stop the intended intruder before they hurt you. A lot of people get into a gunfight, they shoot that guy, he shoots you, both of you die. You don't just disappear into a cloud of smoke like in the movies. You're not going to fly across the fucking room like in the movie Desperado with Antonio Banderas. I watched that when I was a kid and every pretty, everybody gets hit in that. They fucking fly 20 feet in the air. It's not going to happen. However, you're gonna create a big asshole in them with this. So the Mossberg 88 is a super cheap, reliable 12 gauge shotgun that not only you can use for self-defense, but you can use it for bird hunting, you can use it for deer hunting, you can use it for moose hunting. And on top of that, you can use it for having fun and shooting at the range as well. Absolutely recommend that. All these guns, if you buy one of these guns for self-defense, buy a couple of boxes of ammunition. The reason why, number one, guns work better when they're broken in. I don't know why people think you shouldn't buy used guns. If they're a good gun, they're gonna be even better when they're broken in. That way you're not gonna have any burrs, you're not gonna have any problems. Number two, you're gonna learn how to operate it and use it under stress, and you learn that just by intuitively using it while having fun. Because if you take this out on the range, you're gonna have to load it and unload it quite a few times, because every time you shoot the damn thing, you have to load the damn thing. And shotguns are tough to load, and you really do have to get used to it. People see it in the movies, they think they can do it, they try to push it through the shell loader, and the shell pops out, or they hurt their thumb, and you don't wanna be doing that while Michael Myers is walking up your stairs. Shotgun ammo is available everywhere, and you can buy it super cheap. 12 gauge ammo is probably the most available ammunition, at least in my area and most of the United States. So you're gonna be able to get ammo even in a crisis like now. So make sure to practice with this and have a little fun. At number two is the Ruger 10 22. See what I did there? Ah, the Ruger 1022, the hillbilly sniper rifle. The gun everybody shot pop cans with at 700 yards, if you know what I mean. This is the gun that I, one of the guns at least, that I first started shooting with when I was young. We had a uh, Henry lever action, which I got first, and then shortly thereafter, one of my buddies had one of these, and we were plinking like crazy, shooting rabbits and squirrels and all that, and a lot of my shooting fundamentals, I learned on a 22. Now, 22s are very economic. They're the cheapest rifle usually you can buy, and they're also the cheapest ammunition usually you can buy, and you put those two together, plus with some low recoil, and A, you're gonna have a lot of fun, and B, you're gonna learn a lot of good shooting mechanics. This one here has an 18 inch barrel, however you can get them in 20, 22, 24. You can get them in any configuration you want. And on top of that, once you have the action, you can put them in whatever stock you want. You can change the barrels, you can put any optic on it you want. They are very, very modular and they've been around a very long time. The weight on this guy is sub five pounds because I have a lightweight stock on it. And they take uh, usually a five, a 10, a 20, or a 30 round magazine, depending on where you get yours. And they're also very readily available and very cheap. Some of them come with a cold chamber forged barrel. We have a push button safety on here, which which is pretty easy to use, very Remington 870-like. One of the highest sold guns in the history of the United States. And the reason for that is, is because A, it's cheap, B, it works well, C, it's reliable, and D, the ammo is cheap like I mentioned before. And you put all of those things together and you have not only a very good plinking gun, a very good hunting gun, but if you put 30 rounds on target in an apartment, it's gonna work well for self-defense as well. It's not gonna be as good as an AR, it's not gonna be as good as the Mossberg 88, that's for damn sure, but it is certainly better than, I don't know, anything that's not a gun. I mean, you can put these on target really quick and you can get headshots very, very easily. There's very little recoil and most people can use this very effectively for self-defense. A gun is a gun after all, and I think the Ruger 1022 is sort of the pinnacle of the varmint gun. If you live out in the country or anything like that and you have varmint related issues, this is gonna be your friend. Also very, very suppressible, which is also nice because 22 with a suppressor on is super quiet. Now, before we get to number one, I do wanna mention at least one honorable mention, and that's gonna be the Ruger Wrangler. It is a single action revolver, six shot 22, and if you don't want a Ruger 1022, if that's too good for you, if you don't like semi-autos, because they're too efficient and they're too awesome, you can get a revolver and that's gonna work well also. I mean, that's like a $100 gun that I was shooting at 100 yards. Got it. Yes. And the ammo is super cheap. So if you want to have fun, the Ruger Wrangler is also another really good way to go. That being said, we're gonna get into number one with the M&P Shield. Now, I can't recommend the M&P Shield enough, the standard original version. This is actually the newest version. This is the Shield Plus here. This is my carry gun, and I carry the Shield Plus because it is a double stack version of the fucking Shield that I've been carrying for a long, long time. I said in my video like five years ago, the M&P Shield is the gold standard of concealed carry, and I hold myself to that. Now, the only downside to that gun is that you get eight rounds in the magazine instead of the modern 10 or 12 rounds. However, it's still pretty good, and if you consider the 
fact that I found one the other day for $200. That is a great deal. Not only have those guns been used successfully in many, many civilian altercations and carried around the world and one of the highest selling subcompact pistols, but it comes with a good track record. It comes with a good company. Holsters are readily available because the Shield Plus uses the same shield holsters. So everything that you're gonna need to get out and carry the gun is probably gonna be available for you wherever you purchase the gun, which is super nice. Concealed carry after all is a system. You're gonna want a good belt, a good holster, a good gun, good ammo, and a good shooter. So remember, if you get a small gun like this, you're gonna have to train extra hard because smaller guns are harder to shoot. A lot of times people will buy a gun for their significant other, like their wife, let's say, and their wife doesn't shoot a lot, and they're like, oh, have a tiny handgun, you'll like that. Well, tiny handguns are fucking tough to shoot. So keep in mind that you're gonna have to practice with it a lot, but it's gonna be very effective. The plus side to a small gun is it's gonna be super easy to carry, very lightweight, very easy to conceal, and you won't feel it jangling around on your waist all day, which is really nice. You put eight rounds of SIG 147 grain, and you're gonna be doing just fine, and it's gonna take care of almost any issue that you're gonna need for $200, and you're not even gonna know it's there. Very cool gun, couldn't recommend it enough. Now, the M&P Shield I didn't mention is a 3.1 inch barrel. It's about 19 ounces, if I remember right, and it's a striker fired polymer frame pistol. A lot of these specifics are off the top of my head, so make sure to quote me in the comment section if I got any of the weights wrong. Sorry about that. Overall, this is the 10 guns under $300 that I would recommend. Now, this is based on my experience and my experience alone, and if you didn't have that experience, I'd like to see that in the comment section below. If you feel I missed a few that are available under $300, I'd love to hear about them. Please put that in the comment section below as well, and I'll put them up for future reviews, and we'll see if you are right or not. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please support your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.